Let's get straight into things here. Of course, you lead efforts to strategically uh, position the JSC in the changing landscape of global markets. Just how much of a challenge uh, does that present in the current market environment, or are you starting to see more so the opportunity that's presenting itself? Well, I mean, as anyone, thank you for having me, but um, as anyone who works in the financial services industry knows, it is indeed a challenging environment at the moment. That said, we think there are definite opportunities, and many of those opportunities are associated with the, um, the growth in the African continent, and that's where we're focusing our efforts. I ask because, uh, like you say, I mean, a big part of your strategy moving forward, and like you've just alluded to, is forging alliances with other African exchanges. So take us through this evolving strategy and what we're exactly looking at being put on the table. Well, so the, the exchange of strategy is, um, is multi-pronged. As you correctly point out, there is obviously the alliances with other African exchanges. And that involves, in some part, developing good relationships with those exchanges, looking at product cross-listing opportunities. And also, one day, we hope, looking at technologically linking the exchanges. But that's a way off. More immediately, however, we're focusing on um, consolidating our Africa strategy, so collapsing the Africa board into the main board and Altex, attracting more debt issuers into our marketplace, and promoting more aggressively um, a new type of product that we hope will be attractive, namely South African depository receipts. Mm -hmm. Looking at the interest you've received so far, I mean, uh, give us a hint as to the kind of response uh, that this initiative and this new project or new strategy has actually received from players on the continent itself. So uh, on, the, on the collapse of the Africa board into the main board in Altex, the, um, the African companies that are listed on the Africa board are very enthusiastic about actually being in a position to be compared to their peers. And on the rest of the continent, we're finding that issuers are interested in having opportunities to actually list on either the main board or Altex of the JSE or consider other types of listing opportunities like the SADRs that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. What type of cr criteria would they be held accountable to Siobhan for listing? Would it be uh, the same kind of criteria a South African company uh, would have to adhere to? Absolutely. I mean, the listings requirements would be, would be almost identical. Um, on the, the main board or the, well, identical for the main board and all text listings. So we don't differentiate in that regard at all. And on the SADRs, the, there are similar listings requirements and the benefits come in from the operational side of things. It's easier to actually get the shares traded here or yes. the instrument traded here. It's one thing companies themselves being interested. What about uh, the investor community, uh, specifically here in South Africa? And let's perhaps take a look at the track record that the African board has managed to ignite because that board saw what 12 companies listed on, on that board itself. Um, I, unfortunately, I wish it were 12 companies. The Africa Board actually has only had two companies listed on it, but we have in total 12 African companies listed on the JSC across the various markets. Um, and what we found, one of the big changes that we've, that's come through at the end of last year that we think will increase local investor appetite for African companies was the medium-term budget policy statement that removed the distinction for investment purposes between foreign and um, South African domiciled companies that are listed on the JSE. So institutions no longer have to use a foreign allowance in order to trade these instruments. Okay, so you're anticipating uh, quite a bit of an uptake from an investor side of things. What about uh, the other African stock exchanges themselves? I mean, uh, what kind of relationship building have you been down with with these other African exchanges? Because, uh, you know, one of the fears that may sit is that we'd have African companies list on the JSC for liquidity purposes and then perhaps mm. not list on home ground. So these are legitimate concerns that have indeed been raised by exchanges. We think that there are two ways around that. The one is obviously um, we work with these exchanges where our, pri our preference really is that the company lists on both its home market and on the JSE rather than simply pursuing a listing on the JSE. And for many companies that is the preferred route anyway. Um, the other thing, obviously, is that, again, these SADRs, where the company doesn't actually have a listing outside its home market. The listing is on the home market, but the depository receipt, which is like the share, is simply made available for trading in other markets. 
So you get away from some of the, the p political sensitivities. Yeah, political sensitivities. What about uh, regulatory issues? Uh, any challenges that present themselves, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to regulatory issues right now? At the moment, we find, I mean, the companies that, as I said, come and list on the JSC, they, they pursue a full listing, so they are regulated by the JSC as um, a full regulator in exactly the same way that we regulate other markets. So the companies have to satisfy our listings requirements. Mm -hmm. Have you set a specific target, Siobhan, in terms of the kind of growth that uh, you see coming through and the kind of uh, or targets in terms of the number of companies that are expected to list during the course of this year from broader Africa, from outside of South Africa's borders? Because you highlighted earlier that you know we only had two companies listed on the African board mm -hmm. itself. Targets are unfortunately somewhat difficult to, to set in advance. We are in conversation with a number of companies who have expressed interest in either a direct listing on the JSC or the use of the depository receipt mechanism, but I don't want to sort of pin down on specific numbers. We do hope to see a few listings this year though.